I believe that that our version of of relationship with land, aka land management practices, was um, really in deep acknowledgement of of a law of life here. And we call it the I call it the law of the sovereignty of all beings. So here, I was really enjoying what you were saying, Merlin. Here is this symbol that maybe some of you know. We call it the hoop, sacred hoop. And it represents many things. It represents the four directions. It represents uh, four seasons. It represents um, maybe even Arnish talked to me about that. Uh, uh, body, mind, heart, and spirit. But, but it also uh, represents the sacred hoop of life. And so on this sacred hoop, we say that every single life form has been given a seat, a sacred seat on this sacred hoop of life. And every single uh, life form has its very particular way of upholding the integrity of this hoop. And if any member doesn't, uh, isn't able to uphold its part, then the integrity of the hoop begins to fail. And I'm gonna say, I believe that that's, that's what we're witnessing at this moment. And so one thing to notice about that is that we, the five-fingered ones, we are, were also given a seat on this sacred hoop. And so there is a way for us to uphold our part of this sacred hoop. But I'm gonna say that, that we, we, we have become distracted, we were distracted, and in some ways I'm gonna say deceived even, away from that understanding that that was a very principal part of, of being a member of this society of life, of thriving life. And so what I'm also gonna say as I talk about that sovereignty of all beings is I'm going to say, so what this also is saying is that every member of this hoop is to enact their sacred design, their perfect design for thriving life. You know, uh, author Barry Lopez says, you know, he talks about the impeccable way in which the animals conduct their life. But we could also say that of the plants and the virus and the, the mycelium, uh, everybody, uh, water, the impeccable way in which they conduct their lives. Well, what is their impeccability? Their impeccability is to conduct their lives in such a way that they uphold their part of the hoop and that their way of life upholds all the other members of the sacred hoop as well. And that their way of, of enacting their thriving life design does not inhibit or prevent any other member from, from enacting their perfect design for thriving life. Wow, that's that's skill, right? <laughs> that is skill. And so, um, so the question for me has been: Do we, as human beings, um, do we understand that we actually have this capacity? I want to encourage us to believe: Yes, we do. We do. But do we remember what it is? But the first step is, is believing that, yes, we, we know how to do that. We have examples all over the earth of, of peoples who have done exactly that. So as I think about you know, this relationship and this crisis of relationship, I'm, I'm thinking that, that we, uh, I would ask us to, to consider Is it a coincidence that these people who have had such a deep understanding of the science of sustainability, is it a coincidence that they also have this broad spectrum of ways of knowing beyond intellect? And I'm going to say no. I'm going to say that it's not a coincidence. I'm going to say that it's a necessity for us to depart, to use the rest of our skill set that I believe every human being has to be able to have relationship with that sacred hoop, with the larger community, I say. So the larger community of life. And then in my case, I also open to a, a larger spiritual community. And it is in through those practices that, that, that these people have been able to maintain, maintain their, their sustainability. Um, I wanted to say that, uh, you know, I, I, at this time, you know, I'm asking what, what is really essential 
in terms of if our right relations. And what I want to say is, is that most of our, our you know, and actually I, I didn't say that, Rianne, uh, you're such a hero, heroine to me. <laughs> um, your, your book really changed a lot of my, my view and, and my work. Um, but I'm going to say that uh, we, um, we are in this amazing place of, of, of it being um, somewhat, it's disorienting, it's, it can be frightening, everything that's breaking down. And at the same time, it's creating cracks in, in, in the foundations of things that seemed immovable which creates this place of, of huge possibility right now. And so we have a chance to re-examine, you know, I always say our best thinking got us here. <laughs> so we have an opportunity to consider what, what are we missing? What else can we open to? And so I'm going to propose that, that maybe um, that we can look at, at this paradigm that we've been operating out of, which was designed primarily by intellect that, that idea that intellect alone could, could carry us. And we're finding out that it can't. You know, I always say, try having a romance with intellect only. <laughs> it's not very satisfying. I'm not saying that the intellect is useless. I'm saying that it's a, it's a particular tool for, a particular, for particular jobs. And I don't think it's the tool for the whole job for us. So, you know, I've been thinking about um, how do we how do we come back into a place of opening? 